Which word's pronunciation tripped up Matt Smith the most? And there are certain words that you just can't say. How was Josh O'Connor thrown into the deep end during his first week of filming? I'd never been on a horse in my life. Oh, that's so. And what naughtiness does Olivia Coleman get up to during lunch breaks? I love that. Hi, I'm Dylan. Let's go. The warm-up act with Claire and Matt, which refers to two firm favorites from seasons one and two. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Matt Smith as the young Prince Philip and Claire Foy as the youthful Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, because and they spent all the money on the first series, so we're just in a shed. <laughs> As is evident, Claire is absolutely hilarious and has, in her own words, joked that no one will remember her and Matt since they were just the warm-up act. I'm pretty sure fans will beg to differ. Watching these two reflect on their time filming The Crown, let's just say it's rarely a dull affair. Asked about their funniest off-screen memories? Every day. Yes, every day. We were laughing a lot. I laughed a lot. You tend to laugh at me, though, never really with me. Smith also recalls one very specific incident. Once I was on a horse that bolted. <laughs> oh, God. And it, was, it, was, it was frightening. That's not all, though. And then we were very hot one day in Africa on the yeah. tarmac, and we stripped down to our nethers. <laughs> and that was very funny. That, was very that wasn't funny. funny at the time. Apart from being funny on the set, these actors are also quite cheeky in real life, with a great sense of humor. As you know, they were replaced after season two and had this to say about their successors on the show. We want them to do really well, just not quite as well. <laughs> <laughs> these two should go into comedy. Talking about comedic interludes, what cast interview is complete without asking the actors whether they stole something from the set or not? There were lots of rumors about Claire appropriating something after season two's end. A lot of I suspects. deny everything. Yeah. I have nothing. <laughs> There'd be loads of good stuff to steal, but they keep it under they keep it under lock and key. And yeah. they, they need it all as well, so they'd know who'd taken it. It would right. be pretty obvious. <laughs> On a more serious topic, Smith and Foy only have praise for the show's writer, Peter Morgan. Still, they joked about how dedicated and perfectionistic Morgan is. He can't give up control. <laughs> Love to say much, yeah. but he needs And he's to do so it. good at it, you know. And all ten are there, they're ready, the day of the read through. And I've never had that really, ever. Not all ten scripts ready to go. But they also recall a few strange moments on the set. Oh, we have a rehearsal period where he sort of writes when we're in the room. That's quite strange, isn't it? You know, we'll be rehearsing and then he'll go, actually, no, that's not very good. And he'll go away and he'll write and he'll go, this is the scene. Uh, and he does it like on the spot, which is, I've never seen that. Did you know before the first season came out, Morgan already had the second one planned? Yeah, and even before the two actors had signed on, it was always going to be two seasons regardless of the show's success. Regard so that was sort of a daunting thing in the sense that we were like, regardless of whether it went down well, we'd still be shooting the second season. Just imagine that. They were basically shooting the second season while the first one was just airing. To top it off, they also had press obligations while filming, which was really odd, Claire recalls. Because of the way Netflix works, no one had seen anything yet. So everyone was asking questions about the show, wondering if it was a documentary or biopic lauding the royal family. What's it like to kind of do like a, just a show which is just, you know, a love letter to the royal family? And we're like, oh, we haven't, that's what we've done. Apart from their mutual crush on Morgan, neither can hide their feelings towards John Lithgow. They even pitched him for president. And Smith can't stop raving about the time Lithgow took him to see Arsenal in Liverpool. Man crush. He's an amazing ambassador. <laughs> that's my man country. crush. Of course, their roles had many challenges too, a major one being getting those royal accents right. Poor Matt struggled with one word in particular. I can't say, like, I was. And I, I never understood. <laughs> Look at that, she rolls her eyes at me. Was and was. What, which one would I say? Ooh. I'd say was and go, what it's was. It was a two two years of Matt going was 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 was, was and then I go was. and then the whole scene becomes about me. So whenever you hear that word, just realise I've gone through hell to get there. <laughs> Want to hear about another challenge? Sure you do. Let's just put it this way: it doesn't sound like Claire is dreaming of more screen time for the corgis, who she calls dairy lunatics, since they love cheese so much. Look, I think you know, essentially, animals are more expensive than actors. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so therefore, the cor when the corgis are there. We are literally, um, might as well not be there. Yeah. Once I waited right. for three hours for the corgis to run up to a door. That sounds ridiculously funny. To add to the laughter, Foy once did a hilarious rendition of herself, trying to be all serious and professional as the queen, only to have the corgi handler go, Where's my big stick? 
or as a threat to the dogs when they weren't cooperating. For some reason, she kept on saying, fish and chips and mushy peas. <laughs> now let's check out the newcomers on seasons three and four. Following in your predecessor's footsteps, season three of The Crown introduced more than just a few new plot lines, but also new cast members, such as Josh O'Connor as Prince Charles, and of course, Emerald Fennell as his first love, Camilla Parker Bowles. On her role, Fennell said in an official statement, I absolutely love Camilla, and am very grateful that my teenage years have well prepared me for playing a chain-smoking cereal snogger with a pudding bowl haircut. Season four will be no different in terms of new cast members, most notably, we will see newcomer Emma Korn in the role of the late Princess Diana. Speaking to Daily Pop about how intense the pressure of playing Lady Di is, she described the long lead up to season four's release like being pregnant with the show. A bit like a pregnancy, I feel like a bit like a pregnant with the show. Remember, seasons three and four were shot back to back, so it's been a long time coming for this actress's debut. She says she is quite scared of what the fans' reaction will be. Who wouldn't be though? I very much had to kind of put blinkers on and just do my own thing. In turn, O'Connor shared his biggest fears when he made his appearance in season three, knowing all too well that Prince Charles's extracurricular activities would be covered. My biggest concern is that everyone's gonna absolutely hate me. Could you handle the pressure of playing these roles? Have you heard Josh's surreal experience when he just started filming? For the role of Prince Charles, he had to play polo in the first week. That meant he had to get a crash course, quite literally, since he'd never been on a horse in his life. The young actor basically had one lesson where he learned how to get on and off. That's it, nothing more. I had one session with them, so I basically learned how to get on a horse and then get off a horse. <laughs> you didn't know how to drive it. I didn't know how to walk on it. Yeah. Uh, and then a week later, I was sent to the polo guy who, said, who just put me on a horse, gave me a stick and kicked the horse and I was off. <laughs> now that's what you call being thrown into the deep end. It seems like O'Connor is loads of fun to be around on the set, if his next story is anything to go by. He was planning on stealing a paperweight once, but it backfired a bit because it quickly became public knowledge. I changed my plan to uh, to actually be very kind of open and be really kind to the art department on my final day and say how brilliant they are in the hope that they'd say, oh my goodness, Josh, you're so nice. Um, what, what would you like? And I'd say, paperweight, please. So either way, I don't have a paperweight. I'm paperweightless. In addition to the younger actors, a few famous names took over the reins after season two. Helena Bonham Carter and Olivia Colman need no introduction, and neither does Tobias Menzies. Any interview with Bonham Carter and Colman on what it's like to play royal sisters is guaranteed to be a hoot. The two actresses clearly have a lovely friendship in real life. Although, according to them, they're totally different in the way they approach their work. I think I do everything and you don't do anything, <laughs> but she's amazing. I mean, you are, you are a phenomenon, but, but I think you're quite uh, private about what you do. Maybe that's what it is, that's makes So it in sound fact, better. I think you do a lot, but you just pretend that you don't do anything. I think you must have a photographic memory. As per Coleman, for short scenes, she'll wait till the day to learn them. But Carter exclaimed she gets way too panicked if she leaves it too late. It's true, Helena read everything she could lay her hands on and even met Princess Margaret's former hairdresser, who'd kept a lock of her hair. That was a bit weird, Helena jokes. On top of that, she spoke to Margaret's friends, including a former love, Roddy Llewellyn, a character in season three. I consulted my aunt, who is a graphologist, and I did see a medium, sort of jokingly, about something else, and the medium said, oh yeah, Margaret's here, fingering her pearls. In contrast, Olivia's route to her character is more instinctive. I can feel bogged down and panicky and a bit giggly if I do too much research. In addition to their different approaches to getting into their characters, the two women have different capacities for small talk. At lunchtime today, yes. I said, Helly, should we have lunch together? And she said, you can have 10 minutes of eating and talking and then I will be lying down and you can lie down next to me, but silence after that. I went, oh no thanks, I'll go and chat to everyone else. As if that's not funny enough, apparently Olivia loves teasing one of the cast members. Yeah. I particularly enjoy um, annoying Tobias. Because he's Tobias quite in the quiet middle. and quite sensible. And, and he he's wears working. his earphones. Wears too. his earphones. <laughs> like it going, TM! <laughs> and asking him questions. And he, I know that he's just being sweet. Can you just imagine Menzies being all polite and professional? And if it's not these two fooling around, then Bonham Carter and Ben Daniels, aka Lord Snowden, could be seen joking about getting fired. Or we're just whispering in case <laughs> because they're actually then, then they'll sack us. Yes, yeah. I think we're going to yeah. be sacked. When they were asked about what it was like to get the call that said, we need the older people, they weren't defended at all. In fact, Bonham Carter said it was refreshing that, for once, they're being employed for their age. 
that's great to hear. On to yet another well-known actress, Gillian Anderson. If you didn't know, she is dating the show writer, Peter Morgan. And apparently, she was very strict with him while working together. Speaking to Harper's Bazaar, she said, For our own sanity and actually for the benefit of the relationship, we had very clear boundaries. I'm not going to comment on the script, but you're not allowed to comment on the performance. Sounds fair enough. Anyways, in terms of her role as the iconic Lady Thatcher, she felt the pressure of having someone play the role before her. Anderson says she's always been afraid of watching someone else's work in the same role. And as you know, many have portrayed this figurehead. The actress wants to avoid copying elements of that person's voice and mannerisms. Still, she feels it's nice to know that the tone has been set. Chatting to Hey You Guys, Anderson explained that she had to put aside her own beliefs and preconceptions about the person to learn about her motivations, based on how she grew up, her relationship with her parents, and so forth. For her though, the biggest challenge was to make the character human and not to mimic or parody. Season 4 Details It looks like Emma Corrin will have a short run at playing Lady Di, as actress Elizabeth Debicki has been confirmed in the role for the final two seasons. In response, Debicki said, Princess Diana's spirit, her words, and her actions live in the hearts of so many. It's my true privilege and honor to be joining this masterful series. In turn, the spunky Olivia will be replaced by Imelda Stoughton in the role of the Queen in the fifth and sixth seasons. Who will be her Philip, you ask? None other than Jonathan Price, who also appeared in Two Popes in Game of Thrones. Over to you. Which actor is your favorite on The Crown? And will you be binge-watching season four in one go? Share with us in the comments, and don't forget to stay awesome.